Have you ever wondered why there are so many movement items in Terraria? Everyone wears a pair of boots or straps on some wings. What's the point of having all of this other stuff? Well, it's because of one little thing. A lot of them don't need to exist, but the fact that they're in the game anyway is great. We didn't need climbing claws, but they let you scale high walls and have inspired others to make creative parkour maps. We didn't need dashes, but they're a good utility for zipping around the map and changing directions on a dime. We didn't need diving gear, and you could argue that there isn't a use for them, but it's still entertaining. Why am I talking about all of these accessories? You read the title. Hopefully. You know what this video is about. What does this have to do with mounts? Similar to these accessories, mounts are an underutilized option that people usually ignore in favor of wings and boots. Mounts offer variety in how you move and open up various new playstyles. There are some that swim, and others that fly. There are even those that help you out in combat. There are too many to go over in a reasonable amount of time, and I don't feel like talking about some of the more boring options. Instead, we'll cover the interesting stuff and how you can use them to your advantage. Mounts can get pretty strange, so we'll get the useful stuff out of the way before we delve into the more... unusual things. There are a lot of mounts that are great for traveling long distances, the best examples being the Unicorn and the Basilisk. They are some of the faster mounts and are pretty easy to acquire. You can get the Blessed Apple for the Unicorn from any hollow enemy, and the Ancient Horn for the Basilisk from... Yeah, this is a bit awkward. These mounts can really help out during the beginning of hard mode. Both are specialized for a certain playstyle. The Unicorn has a higher top speed, so it's better for long trips. The Basilisk doesn't go as fast, but its ram attack is devastating and can plow through hordes of enemies. A neat detail is that these mounts, along with most others that can deal damage, count as summon weapons. The damage they dish out actually scale with any buffs you have. Everyone always says how they want a new category of weapon for summoners that aren't just whips. Well, this is that category. If you want to play more aggressively and don't mind taking a few extra hits, a mounted summoner can crush anything that gets in your way. If you want to take charging mounts to the extreme, look no further than the Hexed Branch. This goofy little tree is a Master Mode exclusive and is guarded by none other than the Anti-Air Missile Launcher. The tree has the fastest ground speed of any mount and is several times faster than your default running speed. You don't get much airtime and may have trouble going through any terrain that isn't flat, but anything you manage to crash into will take a massive 120 damage, and having summon items can further increase that. Another perk of using certain mounts is that you can ditch all of your movement accessories and replace them with something more useful. If you're going to be riding around and not using your legs most of the time, then you don't need to have boots or wings. There are a couple that benefit from double jumps, so having any of the balloon accessories will enhance your mobility even further. Using these now free accessory slots, you can use whatever you want. Need more damage? Slap on a couple of emblems. Want more survivability? Regeneration or defense items will help. The winged slime has some crazy movement potential. It has a speedy ascent and can even glide, so it can entirely substitute wings for all of hard mode. Better yet, you could do bunny hops for horizontal movement. You'd normally need to dedicate several accessory slots for this kind of versatile movement, but the winged slime mount covers everything you could ever need. That being said, I kind of hate it. Don't get me wrong, if you can learn how to use the thing, then the winged slime is insane. To me, it just feels a bit too sluggish. Changing directions with this thing is a huge commitment, and sometimes the game is just like, eh, no flying for you, and drops you out of the sky. It's fine though, because there's a giant metal worm about to give you a hug. Despite that, I recommend you give it a try. You might like it. If you want a more consistent wing replacement, you might want to use a mount with infinite flight. These are incredibly powerful and throw balance out the window. The ability to stay airborne for an unlimited amount of time makes building much more convenient and regular enemies a joke. And then there's bosses. I don't know, having to fly around and dodge projectiles? It reminds me of something that I can't quite put my finger on. Oh wait. Terraria Enthusiast. There are five of these mounts, 
but one of them doesn't really count because it's a tool for digging rather than one for everyday use. The black spot is the earliest mount you can get. However, it's another one that's restricted to master mode. So unless you like, you won't be getting this one. You can get the UFO from Martian Saucers, though it's pretty rare, so you might be grinding for a little while. The Witch's Broom is an expert drop from the Pumpkin Moon. It's almost identical to the UFO, but it has a slightly smaller hitbox and doesn't throw you off when you enter water. Lastly, there's Cute Fishron, another expert mode drop, but this time from Duke Fishron. The mount has two gimmicks, boosting your damage and speed when you're at low health or in water, and being a precious little thing. These infinite flight mounts are nice, but still feel too similar to wings. Let's get into the weird stuff now. The Lava Shark is the coolest in the game, and you can't convince me otherwise. The speed at which it moves through liquids is only rivaled by the fish run mount. You can fish in hell for the obsidian crates that drop it. The only issue with the mount is that there usually isn't enough space to use it properly. Bodies of water and lava aren't large enough most of the time, and you don't want to beach yourself. There's a way to fix that though, playing on the Drunk World Seed. The seed adds a lava ocean in the middle of the underworld. You don't have to worry about burning up either, because while riding the shark, you are completely immune to lava. Now you have all the room you need to practice jumps. If you want the two most neglected mounts in the game, look no further than the Scutlix and the Sand Tank. Both of these mounts don't offer the best vertical mobility, but make up for that by having some absurd firepower. They are the only two that don't deal summon damage, and that's probably for the best! If you were allowed to further increase their damage, I think we'd have a problem! While riding these things, facing towards enemies will cause the mount to automatically shoot at targets. The Scutlix is a speedy little gremlin that fires a barrage of lasers that tear through crowds of foes. I found the most success with it during invasions and general use. It got me where I needed to be, and kept me safe while doing so. The Sand Tank doesn't hit as hard as the Scutlix, but its bullets still pack a nasty punch, and it periodically launches homing rockets. The rockets are ideal for bosses, you get extra damage for free. If you want to exchange some mobility for combat potential, these are the mounts for you. While mounts are amazing in some situations, they can struggle in others, like having to move through small spaces or quickly changing directions. Players don't want to commit to mounts and choose having the versatility that accessories provide. If you prefer playing this way, you should try using the pogo stick or the regular slime mount. These mounts aren't meant to be used all the time, so you can keep your wings and boots. They can't run fast and won't be flying too high, but what they can do is fall. How is this useful? If you find yourself flying uncomfortably close to an attack, the increased falling speed lets you avoid the incoming blow. Think of it as a downward dash, one that's mainly used for defense. The slime mount is also able to bounce off of enemies you land on, letting you Goomba stomp everything in your path, or giving you a little extra distance on your jumps. Even outside of combat, they can be pretty handy. My favorite use for them is speeding up elevators. Falling through the earth can take forever. Pressing the mount button will. Ah. I'll leave things off there. I've covered about half of the available mounts, and the ones that remain don't have much going for them. They're still good, but not worth dedicating an entire section to. I guess they get put here in the honorable mentions for not standing out. Oh right, I forgot about vehicular manslaughter. Minecarts can be seen as another form of mount, but that'll have to wait for another time. Until then, have fun using mounts, and try not to get run over.